Hello everyone, welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who's helping to lead worship today, it is my honor to get to welcome you. I'm so glad that you've chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today. If this is your first time to worship with, with us, that's awesome. And we hope that you will make sure to fill out the contact form. The link for that is in the post for this worship service. And there's a QR code on your screen as well. Uh, in that contact form, of course, you put your name and address, ways that we can get in touch with you. We want to be able to send you the e-newsletter with all of the information about uh, ways that we can connect and fellowship and grow in faith together uh, with Douglas Avenue. And there's also a place Place on that contact form for prayer requests that go to our pastors and prayer team. So I encourage everybody who's worshiping today to uh, use that contact form. Now, when we do worship together online, we make sure to always covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. Now, our covenant to participate means that we are going to do what it is that we're doing today in worship. This isn't just a random video. This is worship of God, worship with a community of of faith. And so I encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions to uh, really focus in and do what we're doing. Pray when it's time to pray, sing when it's time to pray, when it's time to sing, and just fully participate in this time of worship. And then our um, covenant to be a blessing means that the way we are in the comment section together, the way we may be with other people while we're engaging in this worship service, and what we're sending out into the world. We want all of it to be a blessing to everyone who comes in contact with us today. Again, I am so glad that you are here. Welcome to worship. Join us in singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. My name is Joy Brown and I am a member at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and I am also and I also help out with the youth group. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Renewing God, fount of every blessing, thank you for the saving work you have done, are doing, and will do in our lives. Help us to do what Jesus asks us to do. Help each of us to grow in our likeness of him. Help us together to live as the body of Christ connected with Jesus at all times and in all places. Let your generous love flow through us as a powerful witness to your kingdom in this world. By the power of your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 
Now, let's share the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Please share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks of our church community. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Marlene Fleury. I'm a friend of Douglas Avenue Methodist Church. May peace be with you. Hi, I'm Becca Philbrick, and I'm the Director of Music Ministries. I'm Kellen Clemmer. We are here at the SEMA Honor Band. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Hi, I'm Steve Dunker. And I'm Jeff Peterson. Saying hello from beautiful Cancun, Mexico. Peace be with you. It's time for small talk, so let's get all of our kids who are with us to come in close to your device and to your screen so you can hear and see everything that goes on with small talk. This is led by Miss Laurie, who is our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb. So let's get ready, everybody. It's time for small talk. Hello, everybody. It is Miss Laurie and Laud the Lamb here. And Today, we're going to talk about mistakes because we all make them. Laud and Chloe and I were supposed to be on a train today going to Chicago, but I made a mistake. I had the wrong time. Grown-ups make mistakes too. So now, Chloe and Laud and I are driving to Chicago. Laud's driving. It's very good. And since we all make mistakes, sometimes I think kids forget that grown-ups make mistakes too. And sometimes as grown-ups, I think sometimes we forget we make mistakes too. But it happens. And I feel very fortunate because nobody got mad. We just got in the car and drove. And Chloe gave me grace today and law. We're still making the trip to Chicago. We're just driving and it's turned out to be really very enjoyable. And I know God knows that we make mistakes sometimes and we ask for forgiveness and it is granted to us. So just remember when you make mistakes, it's okay. And God says, it's okay. Just ask for forgiveness and try to do better next time. Next time, I'll look a little closer at the tickets. So have a great Sunday, guys. I miss you, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Please join us in singing Reckless Love.
Our reading from the Bible is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. Let us open our hearts to receive what God is saying to us through our Bible reading. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, Jesus' disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But Jesus answered them, You give them something to eat. The disciples said to him, Are we to go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When the disciples had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then Jesus ordered the disciples to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to the heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled and they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Hi, my name is Allison Samaniego. I'm one of the trustees here at Douglas Avenue, and I'm also one of the Wesley Handbell Ringers. I have a very unique perspective of Douglas Avenue because I've been a lifelong member. I've said more than once that I'm serving a life sentence with no chance of parole, and I mean it. I love Douglas Avenue. This church and these people have laughed with me. They have cried with me. They've cheered me on when I've needed support. They have seen me at my absolute best. They have seen me at my absolute worst, and they love me just as I am. There has always been someone here who genuinely wanted to know what I was doing, how I was doing, which is more important, and that interest, that sincerity made all the difference growing up. It really made me feel loved. I love the building of Douglas Avenue. I love it so much that I joined the trustee committee, but as much as I love the building, it's what the building represents that keeps me coming back. It's the community. Douglas Avenue is so great at helping our community in the big and little ways. We have so many great programs that make lasting impacts and change lives for the better. Programs like the Food Pantry and Wouldn't It Be Lovely? And even our Compass program. Douglas Avenue keeps stepping outside its own comfort zone to help those in need. That is what Jesus called us to do. That is why I keep coming back to Douglas Avenue. Programs change, faces come and go, but the love that Douglas Avenue pours into the community never changes. The best way for me to love generously is to keep coming back to Douglas and every once in a while to step out of my own comfort zone and say yes. Today is the first worship celebration in our stewardship series based on Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church's core value, love generously. Loving generously is the heartbeat of everything we think, say, and do with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We love generously through our relationship with folks in our church. We love generously with friends and family. We love generously through new relationships we make with new friends in our workplaces, schools, in our neighborhoods, and in our city. We love generously by taking seriously our call to love and follow Jesus by intentionally doing the kinds of things Jesus did. We love generously with our 
prayer and our time. We live generously with our active work of sharing and showing God's love and works of mercy and justice. We love generously with our financial giving, our tithes and our legacy giving. We live generously by celebrating generously and welcoming absolutely everyone into that celebration with acceptance, affirmation, and joy. And we know that when we love generously as individuals, as a church, through our connectivity as United Methodists around the world and as a part of the body of Christ, well, that love changes the world. We often say at DAUMC that love is a verb. So that means that loving and following Jesus by intentionally doing the kinds of things that Jesus did, well, that's a big deal. Throughout this season, we are going to pray about, celebrate, reflect on, and commit to being people who love generously. We're going to explore what it means to love God generously, love others generously, love ourselves generously, and celebrate generously. And we're going to get to spend a weekend of worship with one of the most generous people I know, the Reverend Dr. Jenny Edwards Bertrand. Jenny will be with us as our special guest preacher uh, in the beginning of November. I hope that you will make every effort to join in worship each and every week during this season and to participate and use the resources for prayer, small group connection, service, and celebration that are available. More information about all of that is coming to you through our special Love Generously e-news and mailed resources. And again, you should use that contact form so we can get those things to you. Uh, today, we're exploring what it means to love God generously. Love God generously. Love God. I know that sounds so basic. Like, why do we even need to talk about it? I mean, we're here, right? Well, just to review a little bit, we know that God is the source of love, the genesis of love, the generator of love. And so, as God's precious children who love and follow Jesus, we believe, as described in 1 John chapter 4, that love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. And of course, there's that first and greatest commandment that Jesus teaches us. And you can do the motions with me if you want to. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourselves. Now, we know those things. We know that loving God is fundamental. But how do we do that? How do we love God and love God generously? Our Bible reading today from the Gospel of Mark gives us a really clear window to look through and see how to do this. And the answer is really pretty simple. Do what Jesus asks us to do. Really? <laughs> Remember, love is a verb. Do what Jesus asks us to do. This is how we love God. Let's walk through this well-loved Bible story and take a look at what's here for us today. Now, just to remind you, the story of Jesus and the disciples feeding 5,000 men, plus women and children, is retold in Matthew and Luke as well. It's not just here in the Gospel of Mark, and it's retold almost verbatim. This is an important story, a foundational story for us. It's good to read it, study it, and reflect upon it often. We are particularly looking at what Jesus asked the disciples to do as our key to love God. Let's notice that the first thing Jesus instructs his disciples to do is this. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Right before this instruction, we learn that the disciples had been teaching, healing, sharing the kingdom of God in word and action throughout the countryside as Jesus had instructed them. They had been doing the kinds of things Jesus had been doing. And now when they come back together with Jesus as a group, the disciples again do what Jesus asked them to do. Come away and rest and be together. That sounds like they are intent on Sabbath practice, prayer, and time with their small group. 
While they are on their way in the boat together to the deserted place, the crowd, the crowd figures out where they are going and they meet Jesus and his disciples there. Of course, Jesus has compassion on the people who are like sheep without a shepherd, lost, wandering, scared, in need. And he teaches the crowds and the disciples too while he's at it. Sounds like they're spending time together in a large group, learning from Jesus, and I'm thinking probably celebrating talking with one another and sharing about what they are learning and experiencing, like what we often do when we gather together for worship. When it gets late, the disciples, also seeking to be compassionate, speak to Jesus about sending the crowds away to the country villages so that they can get some food. Jesus comes back to them, though, with a different idea, and it's a fairly simple instruction. He says, you give them something to eat. You do it. Sounds like Jesus asked the disciples to serve, to see and understand the needs of the people around them and work together to meet that need. But faced with a lot of people with a whole lot of need, the disciples are, well, they're pretty much overwhelmed. They're not sure how to do what Jesus has asked of them. And it seems like they feel, how shall we say, under-resourced? to meet such a huge need. So they throw out an idea of sorts on how to do this. They say, are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? Now, for those of us who are not using this ancient Near Eastern currency every day, which is certainly me and I'm assuming you as well, a a denarius was a day's wage. So are they to take 200 days worth of wages and buy bread for everyone? That's a lot of money and that's a lot of bread because it is a big crowd. Now you can do your own math to figure out what 200 days worth of wages looks like today. This is what I came up with using the average hourly wage in the United States for 2023, which is $28.34. This comes to $45,344. All that to say, the disciples ask Jesus what may have been a disingenuous question, but they still ask. It sounds like the disciples are staying in it, asking questions of Jesus, asking questions of one another, being real about who they are, where they are, and their feeling of overwhelmedness as they seek guidance from Jesus Jesus and discernment together. Jesus comes back with some guidance. How many loaves have you? Go and see. Again, the disciples do what Jesus asks of them. Turns out they have five loaves and two fish. Not just loaves, but fish too. This sounds like they have brought out everything they have, all their resources for this work. They are giving deeply and sacrificially. Then Jesus continues to give them directions and the disciples continue to listen to and do what Jesus asked them to do, which in this case is to get the people organized into smaller groups and to have them sit on the green grass. I think it's really fascinating that part of the disciples' work at this point is getting the meal ready, organizing the people so they can participate, doing the setup work for the meal, and they'll do the cleanup work too. You know, this sounds like hospitality organization, and administration for ministry. Jesus then takes the bread and fish the disciples have given him. They, he prays to God, blesses that food, breaks it up, and gives it to the disciples to distribute to the people. That sounds familiar too, doesn't it? These actions, sharing a meal with Jesus where he blesses, breaks, and shares bread, like communion. A mystery and a miracle of abundant grace received through a simple meal with Jesus as host. Again, the disciples do what Jesus asked them to do and they get the food out there for the folks. All 5,000 men, plus whomever else was there that was not mentioned, like women and children, they all share together in this meal of grace and abundance. Disciples, Jesus, the crowd, in a deserted place, and all ate and were filled. They don't just get a little taste of some bread and fish. All were filled up. Plus, 
When they were cleaning up after this amazing event, they took up 12 baskets full of leftover bread and fish. Leftovers. Thousands of people eating five loaves and two fish with Jesus. And there's an abundance of food that's left over. Now, okay, this is is a powerful story with a lot of meaning for us people who love and follow Jesus. It's one of those stories that you can and should come back to over and over because there's so much generous love and grace, hospitality and action that fills the entire thing. Today, we've particularly noticed how the disciples do what Jesus asked them to do. They love God, they love Jesus by doing those things. And what kinds of things were they doing in this story? Sabbath, prayer time, time with small group for reflection and accountability, worship, celebration, testimony, serving others, seeking guidance and discernment, sacrificially giving of their resources, hospitality, organization, administration, communion. Friends, we know what these actions are. These are spiritual disciplines or spiritual practices that connect us in generous love with our God who loves us so abundantly. This is not an exhaustive list of spiritual practices, but it sure is a whole heaping pile of them. And it is an expansive example of how these spiritual practices work together to form us in the likeness of Jesus, doing the kinds of things Jesus did. Prayer informing our discernment, service working through our sacrificial giving, the sacrament of communion and worship and small group reflection and accountability, working into discernment and celebration. In all of this, we see and experience that these spiritual practices are the generator of generosity, the generator of generous love. Engaging these spiritual practices makes real loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor. When we love God, when we connect to Jesus, connected uh, in doing what it is that Jesus asks us to do, we can and do work miracles of mission and outreach, mercy and justice, love and transformation. And it's why we talk about spiritual practices regularly at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Spiritual practices are the breathing in and breathing out of God's love in Jesus Christ. Breathing in God's love through spiritual practices such as prayer, worship, communion, fasting, discernment. And breathing out God's love through the spiritual practices such as sacrificial giving, hospitality, and service. And friends, you can't exhale if you don't inhale, and you can't inhale if you don't exhale. They work together, these spiritual practices, so that we love God generously and can love others generously too. The founder of our Methodist movement, John Wesley, set in our DNA as Church Together, this method of doing spiritual practices, of doing love regularly, methodically, so that we love God generously with all we are, so that we are shaped wholeheartedly in the likeness of Jesus, becoming more and more Christ-like as individuals and as a church. John Wesley called this going on to Christian perfection. This isn't pious actions for pious action's sake or an excuse for self-righteousness. The method of doing these spiritual practices is so that we can more and more act in perfect love like Jesus. So Wesley, Wesley wrote often about the different spiritual practices, the necessity of doing them and the way they work together to shape us in the likeness of Christ. I'm going to share with you a little bit of uh, his section on prayer that's found in A Plain Account of Christian Perfection. John Wesley writes, God's command to pray without ceasing is founded on the necessity we have of his grace to preserve the life of God in the soul, which can no more subsist one moment without it than the body can without air. Whether we think of or speak to God, whether we act or suffer for him, all is prayer, 
when we have no other object than his love and the desire of pleasing him. All that a Christian does, even in eating and sleeping, is prayer, when it is done in simplicity, according to the order of God, without either adding to or diminishing from it by his own choice. Prayer continues in the desire of the heart, though the understanding be employed on outward things. In souls filled with love, the desire to please God is a continual prayer. Through this season of love generously, you are invited and will continue to be invited to love God generously through spiritual practices. Today, I invite you especially into the spiritual practice of prayer, to pray generously during this season and to commit to this prayer practice along with your church family. We have these Pray Generously uh, cards to help you with this. I hope you can see that. And this is what it says. As God's precious child, I commit to pray about God's generous gifts in my life and about my stewardship of money, time, talents, and spirit. During the weeks of love generously, I will pray by thanking God for God's generous love in my life, asking God's guidance on how I can love generously, listening and following God's direction on how I can love generously with my gifts. I encourage you to make this commitment to prayer using our Prayer Generously online prayer card. The link is available through the Facebook post for online worship and will be available through our e-newsletter as well. You may also receive prayer cards in the mail this week. I encourage you to sign and keep one to help you remember your commitment to prayer and then sign one and mail it or bring it to church. And we'll collect these cards together as an offering of generous prayer. And we will continue to dedicate ourselves to prayer during this season of love generously. As we sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness, please join with us in the commitment to pray generously. Please join with us in loving God generously in all that we say and do. Amen. Let's sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Hi, I'm Nancy Vereen, lay leader at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Let us go together in prayer. Dear God, as we gather together for a time of congregational prayer, we give thanks for the sunshine on this beautiful fall day. We come together to seek your guidance in learning how to love generously. First and foremost, we express our love for you, asking for your guidance to show us your will and your way. Help us to love and care for ourselves, understanding that we are deserving of love and kindness. One of the most frequently discussed themes in the Bible is the commandment to love one another. As we gather here, may we become beacons of light, spreading love and compassion into the world, touching the lives of those we encounter. Let us remember to be with those among us who are struggling, whether it is due to health issues, family or job matters, addiction, poverty, and financial concerns, loneliness, or a loss of spirit and hope. We pray for our world and its leaders and people. May they be granted the wisdom and strength to make decisions that promote peace, justice, and prosperity for all. You, O oh God, know our needs in all things, and we place our trust in your divine guidance. As we conclude our prayer, let us recite the Lord's Prayer together, a reminder of the core principles of faith and love that binds us in a congregation and believe in your word. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks every day for God's love that flows through the life of our church family. Love is the heartbeat of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and we love generously through our generous giving of ourselves, our time, our money, and our gifts. You can make financial donations through DAUMC's online giving portal. The QR code is on your screen. You can set up automatic giving through the financial institution or through ours. You can bring offerings to DAUMC during worship in the sanctuary or mail to the church office. Trunk or Treat is this Saturday, October 28th, from 2 to 4 p.m. Everyone can be a part of this festive outreach to our neighborhood, from decorating a trunk or table, donating individually wrapped candy, and sharing flyers, to helping with setup and cleanup, and providing helpful hospitality on the day of the event. We make lots of new friends at Trunk or Treat, and it is so much fun. Read all about it in the e-newsletter, and use this QR code to sign up to help or contact the DAUMC office to learn more. The Wouldn't It Be Lovely Fall Furniture Showcase Sale is coming up on Saturday, November 4th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Great Hall at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Items sell quickly, so bring your friends and come early for beautifully painted and repurposed furniture, t-shirts, and so much more. There will also be a discount sale on Sunday morning, November 5th from 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. All sales benefit the Wibble Associates as they work to make new lives. For more information, contact Wouldn't It Be Lovely online or at 217-606-5307. Don't forget to mark your calendar and invite your friends to join you for the Youth Group Spaghetti Dinner Fundraiser on Sunday, November 14th from 4 to 6 p.m. in the Great Hall at DAUMC. You can support and great cause, enjoy some delicious food, and make some new friends too. Tickets are $10 for adults, $6 for children 5 years and older, and children under 5 are free. Tickets can be purchased in advance by contacting the DAUMC office, or they can be purchased at the door. All proceeds will support the 2024 Summer Youth Mission Trip to Mountaintop. As we continue to explore love generously during these next several weeks, Please make a point of reading your email and mail for special resources to help support you and your household in your reflection, prayer, commitment, and celebration. 
If you have not already, use the contact form so we can get those resources to you. And if you have any questions or need additional Love Generously resources, please contact the DAUMC office. Thank you for all of the ways you give, love, and serve with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join us in singing Freely, Freely. Thank you for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I've really enjoyed our time together and I hope that you have as well and that it's been a powerful and meaningful experience for you that you will continue to join with us for online worship right here on Facebook and YouTube or you are more than welcome to join with us for worship in the sanctuary at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Uh, worship is on Sunday mornings at 8 15 and 10 30 in the sanctuary and you are always welcome. You will always have a phone with a home with us. You belong with Douglas Avenue. Again, I encourage you to use that contact form. Remember, there's a place there to put prayer requests that go directly to our pastor and prayer team as well. You can imagine we love to be able to pray with you and for you. We're joining together in this commitment to pray generously as we celebrate loving generously. So I encourage you to use that contact form and let us know those prayer requests that you have as well. And now as you go into your day, go knowing how much God loves you. Go feeling that power of Jesus Christ and that call to do the things that Jesus calls us to do and the Holy Spirit that's going to help you with that as we go out into the world to love generously. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Amen.